Hello, welcome back to youtube.com slash snapbolt and twitch tv slash snapbolt games. My name is Max. I'm here with another Pioneer League. Uh, this is the same deck that I ran in the last league. This is Blue White Planeswalkers in Pioneer. This deck was pretty sweet. We went 3-2 and two in the last league. If you haven't seen that, check it out on youtube.com slash snapbolt. Um, I played pretty much the same deck. I have made a couple changes here. I talked about them in, in the end of the last video, but I wanted to run it through another league. Um, like I said, same deck. We just added a couple sensors to try to get the curve a little lower, a little less clunky. I think sensor might be decent in the deck. Um, just the fact that it cycles for one and gives us like more ops, basically one mana draw a card, seems nice. And then also having some utility, but I cut an Elspeth, I cut an Ugin. I had one main deck rest in peace that I cut. And then I cut the Ashiok for a fourth mystical on the board. That's about it. Uh, without further ado, let's just get right into a league. Let's go. Right, welcome to round one. We're against Curvy Inghe. Curveg Inghe. No idea how to say that. Sorry. And let's go. Snap keep this hand. Blue Light Planeswalkers. Pioneer League. This deck is sweet. Don't think I'm going to be cycling the sensor on turn one. I'll just get a tap land into play. Water grave, are we against inverter? Very likely to be. Uh, now I'll just shock this in. We can always cycle a sensor or both of them, or most likely just cycle a Zorius charm. Looming Marsh. Okay, I'm going to censor whatever this is. Yeah. Don't want to just get a free Wayfinder. Then I'll probably just play Teferi on turn three. Just get that down. Oh, no, I can't because I don't have an untapped land. Wow. That's embarrassing. Let's go Fabled Passage. Pass. I probably should have led Fabled Passage on turn one. I just wasn't really thinking. Just gonna censor this Uro. Oh, oh, is it, oh, this is some type of like kind of dredgy deck. So if he gains three life, this will return to the battlefield anyway. I'm just gonna let this resolve, and then I'm probably gonna go cycle Azorius Charm right now. I think I'll keep the censor in hand, Cause, just because I have another Azorius Charm too. Okay, so we want to draw land here. I guess I should also uh, sack this just in case I want to play the Teferi and bounce. Which, if I don't draw land, I'm probably going to do. This like wasn't even that good to censor and send it to the graveyard because then anytime he plays an Uro or gains three, he just gets it back. So I'd rather just have it in his hand. So I definitely like uh, bouncing it there. Ghoul again, sure. This verdict should be good at, at some point too. Probably just gonna cycle sensor here, just so I can keep drawing cards and hitting land drops. Traverse, sure. I'm gonna cycle sensor sensor here, and then I can plus to fairy and actually pass the verdict up if I want, or most likely I'm just gonna play Gideon first. Oh, there's Teferi. Hmm. Well, that's insanely good. I can just play Teferi and have Azorius Charm up for the school. That's so insane. Teferi plus untap two lands. I feel like this should be game, honestly. I mean, I know he's kind of like a dredgy style of deck, and he can probably put a bunch of creatures into play, but this is going to be such a huge advantage here. I'm trying to like okay to this. Maybe I just keep misclicking. Okay, sweet. Cool, he'll probably attack Time Raveler. He does. I could just let it die, but I mean, putting this on top seems pretty good to me. Oh, yeah. 
Duh, he can sack it. But that's fine. We still save our Teferi. Gather the pack. Okay. If he hits a Creeping Chill here, he gets his Ghoul back. He doesn't. Decimator. Okay. Still feeling like this is a really good spot for us. Another verdict. All right, let's start just by plusing this. How, oh, we're just going to concede. Okay. Get to bring in a couple of Rest in Pieces and Ashiok. Oh, no, I took the Ashiok out, of course. Now when we want it, we don't get to, we don't get to have it. Is all we want Rest in Peace? Elspeth Conquers Death is just seems a little slow. I guess Aether Gust. A lot of his like graveyard cards are green, like that mill himself. So Gust seems pretty decent. Vito seems pretty decent as well. I like most of the cards in our deck. Don't want to overboard. Because he saw multiple sensors, he could play around it and doesn't seem as good on the draw. I don't think I want Mystical Dispute. I'm pretty sure I don't. He just has a lot of cards that are green and black that Mystical is not going to get. Just wonder if I want. I could just keep the two vetoes, or I could go up to more. Don't think I'm going to go up to more. Could just side out like two sensor and maybe Narset is a little slow. Maybe these Gideon Ally of Zendikars aren't really doing much as well. Especially if you can bring back multiple things. Narset seems kind of hard to protect, but it can help find like Verdict. Not sure if he's gonna be able to draw multiple cards on his own turn. I don't really know his list that well to be honest. I think I'll just do this. This looks fine. Rest in peace should be pretty insane. Alright. Sand looks fine. This time I'll actually lead with Fabled Passage like I should have done in game one. Opponent goes to six. And leads tap land. I'm just going to lead Fabled. Uh, I was going to say, I'm still going to lead Fabled Passage here, I think. There's no reason to leave up mana on turn one. Turn two, I can go Glacial. I can do this Hallowed Fountain later. Just go Island. Pass. I like using one of the Fabled Passage there, I think. There's a Seder Wayfinder. Yeah, I don't think I want more Vetoes than two. Two seems fine. So he Creeping Chilled, but he did not get a Ghoul back. And what did he put into his hand? Put Overgrown Tomb into his hand. Okay. Definitely not going to Azorius Charm the Wayfinder. Just going to take one. Leave up Veto. Is he just going to play a Ghoul here? There's the Overgrown Tomb we knew about. Hmm. Wayfinder is not what we wanted to see, but... Supplier, Supplier. Put Blooming Marsh into his hand. Yeah, he shouldn't have... Oh, I guess he was playing around Sensor by playing the Overgrown Tomb first. So that makes sense, actually. So the only card we know in his hand is Blooming Marsh. Okay. Just going to cycle Azorius Charm. I mean, Verdict should be pretty nice in this matchup. Three drop Planeswalker off the top? No. Could get Interplanar Beacon down. Could just play a tapped Talad Fountain. There's no way I can play two spells anyway. Sure. Seems good to me. Just take two. Dot sees us. I mean, I can just veto that. Kind of like it in saving this to fairy. This also disguises information, so he doesn't know if he has to like play around a verdict. 
another Wayfinder. Wow. He hit a ghoul, but nothing to bring it back yet. And there's the Blooming Marsh. He put Swamp into his hand. So he has all these, like, Emerge cards. So I have seen this deck before. Uh, guess I'm just Fabled Passaging here. Could play Interplanar Beacon if I draw another Interplanar Beacon. I guess I want to play it. But I could also draw, like, another Azorius Charm. Or, like double opt or something. I think I'm just going to play Fabled Passage. Pass. I don't really care that much about getting two Interplanar Beacons down before this Teferi. And you played a Llanowar Waste, not the Swamp that we know about. Interesting. It's going to be a hard cast. Or driven. Wow. That's pretty annoying. What is the Despair side? Doesn't tell us. <laughs> really doesn't tell us. And if he despairs, it's we have to discard a card. Ugh. All right, well, now I probably will Azorius Charm, a Wayfinder, because I'd have to discard a card anyway, and it's like a two-card swing. Oh, that Driven to Despair is pretty insane here. Let's just put this on top. White, blue. I know he gets another Wayfinder trigger. It's not ideal, but... Is what it is. Oh, I was like, why does he get four triggers? Because it was driven and despair, that's why. So he goes draw, draw, and then we discard two cards. Luckily, we just have extra lands. We do get to land a Teferi. Um, whatever. Not sure. Not sure what's better here. I'm going to sack now, play Teferian Plus. Probably should have just kept the Fabled Passage. Hmm. Master of Time is good as well, but I'll just get Hero down. Eight Teferi dot deck here. Oh, I should have played Enderplanter Beacon. Oh, Elspeth. So assuming we dodge a Thoughtseize, we're going to be in pretty good shape here, I think. I guess you could have, like, whenever you cast a spell, they reveal their choose a land with converted mana cost 3 or less and one with 4 or greater. Okay, so that would take our Elspeth. But, okay. Did draw a couple cards that turn. Tax to fairy, that's a good sign for us. There's the swamp we know about. Oh, and he's casting probably Dismended, Distended Mind Bender. Or the one that draws a card, yeah. Okay, so he takes our Elspeth. It's annoying. Luckily, we still have Teferi of Hero of Dominaria down, and we can get Master of Time down as well. That was unfortunate, though. Nothing we could do about it. Another beacon, so getting punished. Not playing that tight here. Just going to plus this. There's an opt. All right, I think I lead on that. Supreme Verdict top. I think I'm going to play Teferi, Master of Time. Discarding a beacon, because then I can just phase out the Mindbender and then Verdict. If he has another like Mindbender effect, it's obviously bad for me. But otherwise, he'll probably commit more to the board and then next turn I can Verdict. So I'm going to go with that line. Wait, blue, 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 Teferi. Then plus to loot. I'll discard this land, which should be in play. Yeah, that could cost us a fair amount of life. Uh, throughout the course of this game. Another beacon. Sure. And pass. Get to untap lands. wonder if I should have any hard counters in this deck. So I'm just going to phase out this Mindbender for sure. Okay. 
It's attacking both at Teferi. Okay, now if I phase this out, it's actually not good for me because I want to be able to Verdict next turn. So I'm just going to loot again. Let the Teferi go. Still pretty good. Took pressure off our Hero of Dominaria. If he wants to commit more to the board, he gets Verdicted. Yep. That's the one we put on top. So we hit a creeping chill, so he's going to get a ghoul back and then a prize amalgam back. You can sack ghoul. You put overgrown tomb into their into their hand. Oops. Well, we know about overgrown tomb. Yeah, this might be pretty tough here. Him taking our Elspeth is like playing the dismented mind bender that turn was really annoying. I think that deck has Uro as well. Oh, this comes back at the next end step too. Oh, that's even more annoying. Let's see, maybe we can draw it to fairy. Another verdict. It's plus. So he is going to get a prize model and back that can attack to fairy, but at least he won't kill it. So now I'm going to play another beacon. And go verdict. Yep, he draws a card. And then he gets prized amalgam back. But then if he can't kill our Teferi, we might be fine. Opponent with five cards in hand, but we do have another verdict. So we can attack Teferi down to two. So he's attacking us down to seven. I feel like that's not a great sign. Destroy target green or white planeswalker, maybe? Hmm. Just hard cast amalgam. That's fine. I mean, we can find rest in peace at any point, too, which we'll just totally recommend. Oh, distended mind bender here. Oh, abundant maw. Drain for three. Okay, that's fine. I mean, the problem is if he has more of those in hand, that's going to be a problem. But right now, oh, that's... Put prize from album trigger onto this. Okay. As long as it doesn't have more abundant maws, we might be okay. Just gonna plus. Ooh, okay, nice, nice. That is huge. That's exactly what we wanted. Alright, I'll play glacial. Add blue white. Play to fairy. Gonna plus to fairy. And then plan on playing an instant speed verdict. Yeah, not playing the other interplanar beacon could cost us this game. Still in a good spot here, though. Okay, so he returns a prized amalgam. I untap two lands. And then we have an instant speed verdict here. Oh, I guess he can draw a card off Ghoul now, but I still think this is better. Less shenanigans to play around. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know, because I wanted to kill the other amalgam too. Yeah, this is better. Still have a Teferi on five. Can we find a uh, rest in peace, please? Alright, if he had hit a creeping chill there, that would have been really bad. Oh, and we could hit one here. He doesn't. He can haunt a dead though to return at instant speed. Hmm. That's not good. Oh, just cast creeping chill. It's also not good. We 
go down to three, returns these, and then he also returns two prized amalgams. Yeah, we still come back on on his turn here. Or no, do they not? Oh, because these return on the instep. Yeah. So those return on my instep as well. So now we're in a really bad spot. All right, let's plus. Gust. Gust just looking so bad. This probably shouldn't be in the deck, actually, now that I've seen more of it. Yeah, we can top these, like, Seder Wayfinders and stuff, but it seems a little situational. Not sure if I can come back here. I might as well try to draw a card. Suppose I'll bounce a ghoul to fairy. Okay. Blue white, blue white, to fairy plus get to gain two life at least. The tension sphere. Is that enough to do it? Maybe also should have bounced supplier for the out of detention sphere, but he's gonna get he's gonna get two prized amalgams back on my end step. So right now he can only attack for four. Just yield to these. Untap lands. Oh no, he had triple prize amalgam. Okay, I think we're dead then. All I can do is loot. I think I punted this game. Although we drew half our deck, couldn't find rest in peace. Yeah, I was going to say, probably going to draw it here. All right, good game. I didn't see any answers to Rest in Peace. He could have some in hand. I feel like this matchup's fine for us, though. We have Detention Sphere. We have a lot of Planeswalkers that are annoying for him to deal with. Okay, I'm going to take these Gusts out. Narset still doesn't seem great. I guess sensor still is fine, especially on the play. So I'll just do a smaller board, take out two Narset, bring in two Rest in Peace. Again, I don't think I want more Vetoes. I could even keep in two Narset over the two Vetoes. But just being able to counter like a key Grizzly Salvage or something seems pretty nice. I mean, Elspeth Conquers Death does stuff, but we're bringing in Rest in Peace, and that's really where we want to be. I guess I'll keep getting into the trials. It can just, like, buy time and allow us to have some nice Supreme Verdicts. Just, like, if he has one creature, play Gideon plus on it. Also, with our four Gideons, the emblem can be kind of annoying for them. Now I'm kind of wanting like a second Suns Champion in the deck. This card's real. Could go two Sensor, two Suns Champion. Like there's a lot of decks. If you're not playing against like a blue deck that has counter spells, you can just like always have the out of getting to your Elspeth Suns Champion. Like, oh, I thought I submitted. I know like it got to sit in Mindbender that last game, but we were very close to casting it. If we had, I think we would have won. All right, we don't have a rest in peace, but I'm going to keep. Also, our lands aren't really coming into play untapped here, but still think I have to keep this hand. It has like a good mix of lands and spells and card selection. Uh, now I'm going to leave up Veto. Because if he plays like a, a two-mana spell, not a Seder Wayfinder, I'm going to Veto it. 
I mean, I guess he could Grizzly Salvage, but I'm still going to opt. Bottom this. Don't need more lands. Draw it anyway. He's going to Salvage right now. Sure. So he put a Blooming Marsh into his hand. And didn't hit anything. Wow. That was not a good Salvage. Wow, we just drew all lands. I think I want to just play Gideon. Maybe even just Emblem right now, just because it's kind of annoying for him. Yeah. I think I do. It's not that great, but I'd rather just get that down now. just something else that he's going to have to deal with at some point. Gather the pack. Another thing I would have liked to veto. Wow, we're just missing hard. Yeah, that's why I don't like playing those type of decks. What do you put with gather the pack into his hand? Gather puts a land or creature, right? Oh, creature. So he missed on gather the pack, right? Or did he hit the Stitcher Supplier? Oh, he hit Stitcher Supplier. Okay, and then cast it. And then hit a Haunted Dead. All we drew is freaking lands. Wow. Not really drawing... We're not really where we want to be. Alright, I'll play a Hallowed Fountain Tapped. Start plussing this Gideon. He's probably just going to... He can just activate Haunted Dead. If he wants. If he plays like any spell, I'm going to veto it. Alright. We've got to find Rest in Peace at some point. I guess he doesn't have Arrow. Now we can Haunted Dead get back Prized Amalgam at some point. Okay. Azorius Charm. Azorius Charm's fine. Just plus. Play Vantress and pass. He's probably just going to haunt the dead here, triggering prize to Malgum. We just got to find rest in peace. Really wishing I had three rest in peace. It's been a fun match, though. Also can find Verdict here, would be pretty good. We discarded another Haunted Dead. On Magic Online, it can be kind of tough to tell what's going on. Oh, we sack. This is an Abundant Maw. Or, uh, oh, it's a Mindbender. Sacking the Haunted Dead. It's a pretty good combo. So I can draw a card with Azorius Charm. I think I just let it happen. He can take Azorius Charm if he wants. Then I can just Castle Vantress. Yeah, we don't get to draw, but still getting to scry is pretty good. Takes the Charm. We can kill our Gideon right now. Okay, he does. He's only got three cards in hand. Scry. To fairy. Don't think Teferi is good enough here. Well, there's Verdict. Okay. Let's go Glacial. I'm playing Glacial because I want to be able to leave up Veto as well. Pro I guess the problem is here he can end of turn Haunted Dead. 
which is pretty rough. And you hit a creeping shell if the tra <laughs> oh yeah, I mean we just lost here. We didn't we didn't find our rest in peace. Unfortunate. We can still come we can still come back in this game, but it's gonna be tough now. We just needed to draw into the rest in peace like at some point. I mean, he has six power here. It's not that insane. He's only got two cards in hand. Or I keep saying he. I should say our opponent. Another wayfinder. Now it's gonna be tough because now we need like multiple things. We need like another wrath. We need a rest in peace. I think we're done at this point. Could have not opted on turn two to counter like the first salvage, but I mean that missed anyway. Not sure if that would have really done it. I think we needed to like opt into a rest in peace or something. Alright, well I'll try this. He does have to kill his Gideon before killing us. Go. Cast Creeping Chill. I mean, I can just veto this. Probably going to. I'm not sure what else I need to veto at this point. This just stops a lot of stuff from coming back. Driven. Brutal. Driven to Despair is actually a pretty good card. They gain Trample. Attacking all at me. Okay, now is really when I need to find Rest in Peace. Rest in Peace off the top. I wonder if I want to stop on my upkeep to Scry to. Because I could scry into a rest in peace. Yeah, I think that's what I need to do to win this game. He does get to. They do get to draw three. They also need to kill our Gideon. I'm going to scry on upkeep. Because I do really need to find rest in peace. Sucks if we have to top like an Elspeth Suns champion here or something. I feel like Jace would have been decent, but I think I'm just going to bottom both. Sensor. Not where I want to be. Rest in peace? No. In a rough spot here for sure. Dot C's, okay. Despair, sure. Oh, the creatures gain menace. Oh, so he's killing the Gideon. Okay, that makes sense. Doesn't want to allow me to keep getting two twos. Get to discard a card. Now I don't even think I can really scry because then he just gets. They get to get haunted dead back, triggering some prize amalgams. I'm just gonna draw. All right. I think we're dead. That sucks. Close match. I think I misplayed game two. I could have played tighter. Uh, whatever. Just call it a, a warm up. Let's go. Let's go round two. Still a fun. Still a fun match for sure. There.
Snap keep this hand. Again, I don't think I'm gonna I don't think I'm gonna want to cycle this sensor right now. I'm probably gonna be able to get a spell with it. So I'm just gonna play a tap talent fountain. Having this veto is pretty nice too. Well, we'll see, but I think it will be. Thoughtsies. Grazer. Okay, is this like a Field of the Dead deck? So I'm trying to pay costs of another spell. Yeah, I don't know what other spell they could play at that point. I'm just going to play Glacial Pass, leave up Sensor, leave up Veto, leave up Opt. I'm probably going to Sensor anything that I can. Even if there's something I want to veto, I'd probably prefer to censor it. Yeah, still going to just censor this. Still three mana, explore, draw a card, or explore, gain three. He didn't. They didn't want to send a message. Just play planes here. Could have played a tap talent fountain, but I could see where I want to veto and opt. I think this is the best way to do that. Looks like we're going to want the rest in peace in this matchup too, most likely. Ooh, village rights. I think I just veto this. Counter a divination. Next turn getting down to fairy should be pretty nice. Bottom this. More lands. So many lands. Still gonna get down master of time here. Seems better to me than time raveler. Start ticking up. Uh, I think this is probably the worst one. Just if I want it to come in untapped, I have to pay life. Okay. Can use Teferi again. Village rights. Sultai. Interesting. It's just not playing any cards. That's good for us. Another beacon. Just keep looting with the fairy. Wow, just a lot of lands here. Let's play beacon. Let's play to fairy time raveler. Maybe he, they have a sharknado. The fairy master of time is actually decent against sharknado because you can buy time by phasing it out. Um, I'll just plus here. It's likely that they could have a creature that I'll want to bounce with the Fairy Time Reveler. Like we flooded out pretty bad here, but this Teferi Master of Time is trying to help us with that. Abrupt Decay the Teferi Well, Sucks we didn't draw, but can't be countered, so okay. No other spell. He's one card in the graveyard away from casting that Uro. Oh, Narsa, that's so good against the Uro, too. Awesome. Narset's a great one. Gideon's also really good. I think I'll start just by playing. Could start by looting with the fairy. Yeah. Alright, discard Fabled Passage. I'm going to have to play land because I think I want to play out my entire hand. I'll start with Narset. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, okay. We're good. 
go narset minus Zori's charm opt or verdict. Verdict seems pretty safe against their deck. Sure. Just seems like a nice insurance policy. You can also just loot it away with Teferi, if anything. Gain some more life. Just going to emblem this Gideon. And I will loot with this Teferi because I want to tick up to threaten ultimate. Looks like I should likely have this game. Oh, Swift End the Teferi. Still loot. Okay. Minus this Nars, that should be good. There's the Elspeth Sun's Champion. I'll cast it. Gain two life. We'll make some soldiers. I guess there's no harm in just attacking for four. Especially when the opponent just has one island up. Getting into the trials not like seeming insane here. Not great against Uro. Thought sees us, sure. Cat cast Uro from the graveyard, but they don't get to draw because of Narset. That's pretty huge. I can just ver verdict that away and then he won't they won't be able to recast it. Suppose I'm just gonna go attack for two because he's gonna block. They're gonna block one. Then uh, I'll go verdict plus plus. Yeah, that seems best. Attack with all. Get him down to eleven. Verdict. I'll play this. Plus. Target something. And plus. They could have another Murderous Rider for this Elspeth. That would be worst case for us. Castle of Antris actually putting in work. Looks like if we if we draw a land at some point, we're gonna activate it. Fairy also pretty good. So your next turn, prevent all damage target permanent would deal. I'll just start with the fairy. We're up to thirty one. Concession to the Hero of Dominaria. Sweet. Do I want all four Mysticals against that deck? I wonder if I want all four Narsets. I mean, they might be like an Uro-centric deck. 
I also I have so many cards that I could bring in. I feel like I want all of these. I also don't feel like there's going to be room for all this. So this is 11 cards that are potential. Let's see. These Gideons don't seem that good. Teferi Master of Time was really good there and really got us out of that flood. Verdict also seems fine. Just seems to go really well with our plan. Do I want the quad mysticals? That's the question. Hmm. Our opponent has a row that we saw, but then we saw a lot of black and green cards. They're probably going to bring in some counter spells though, which mystical is good against. I could kind of hedge. I think I want all the Narsets. Sensor, maybe not great against the Uro deck. Two Veto seems fine. Zorius Charm honestly doesn't seem great. Could keep in some, take out one Teferi, go down one Verdict. I've never really cut only one Verdict before. Usually I'm cutting like two or four, never really cut one. I think it's fine in this matchup though. Don't want to be too flooded on that effect. I think Aether Gust is definitely good. I think they're going to have a lot, like I said, a lot of black and green cards. I think Rest in Peace is good. The Tension Sphere is great. I think having a mix of stuff seems nice to me. Bring in two Mysticals, sure. Even though we have four Mystical, you don't necessarily have to bring them all in every time. Like if you're against like blue black inverter, it's like yeah, you're gonna want four mysticals, but it's fine to just bring in a smaller number of them. The arboreal grazer seems strange in that deck. Same with the village rights. Is he trying to like Uro and village rights it and like get value that way? I'm not really sure. Opt was a good draw. If our opponent wants to counter the opt. I'll be fine with that. It means they can't counter like one of these better spells. Land Uro would be annoying. Wow, Soul Guide Lantern right now? Sure. They're just drawing? I mean, maybe they don't have another land. This card is just not good. I mean, I, I shouldn't say that. It is good. It's just like... So often when you play with this card, it's kind of like Azusa, where if you don't have a bunch of lands and stuff to do and this card, then it just seems to not do anything. Like, he would have just played his second land there and had some other random good card in his hand other than Grazer. But because he's trying to accelerate using Grazer, it just doesn't it just doesn't work. Uh, seems good, but I think I can bottom it and just find more action. I'm happy I did. Just leave up Aether Gust here. If our opponent doesn't do anything, I'll just opt. Village rights. Alright, well, I can't counter that. They found a land. Do they have another spell? Doesn't look like it. Could be a Grizzly Salvage, but I'm still going to opt here. I mean, fifth land isn't bad, but I think I can just draw lands naturally by bottoming. Yeah. The reason I did that, let me explain it a little bit more. I bottom a land because I'm going to draw a card for opt, I'm going to draw a card for turn. By the time I get to turn five, I'm going to naturally draw another land, but I don't want to draw two lands or that many lands. So I think by bottoming there, it's better. Now, I'm just going to jam Narset, I think. So I'll go Beacon, Narset. This could get like Mystical or something. Or they could Salvage here and I don't get to Aether Gust it. Yeah, Mystical. But that's not the worst thing ever. 
if that resolved, it just like seems really good against their Uro. They might have other ways to draw cards that they're not able to do anymore. And I get to go Narset. Next turn I can tab out for Gideon. Next turn I can tab out for Teferi. This Aethergust will probably be good later. Tracker, yeah. Clue, land clue, or no land, okay. Does have a land. I still think I'm just going to get this Gideon down while I can. Seems worth it to me. Just go Vantress. Gideon. Make a guy. It's pretty unlikely that he's going to be able to kill the Gideon with the tracker. I guess he's going to have to go untap, crack the clue, abrupt decay the knight, attack the Gideon. If they have all that, it also takes their whole turn. And then I get to go to Fairy plus leave up Aethergust. So I still like tapping out for the Narset, then tapping out for the Gideon, then tapping out for the hero. Wait. Uro. Okay. Maybe we'll be able to nab the Uro on the escape with Aether Ghost. They hit a land, but they're not going to try to attack through this knight. Oh man, Thoughtseize, that's not good. They're going to take Teferi, I think. Yeah. Still feel like I'm in a decent position though. Glacial. I don't want to play that because I don't want to give away any information. I'm just gonna make another 2-2. I guess I'll just the tension sphere that because I can leave up Aether Gus for Uro. Don't want him to keep getting clues and just get infinite value. Could have also attacked there, but I like making another 2 2. People generally, I generally play more passively with Gideon than most people. Most people just start like crashing in, but I generally like to make more 2 2s. It's also why, I mean, I don't play with this card that much. Usually when I like build my Planeswalker decks, it doesn't make the cut, but I think here. The Gideon emblem of you can't lose the game from the other Gideon, and then having this Gideon makes it better. Wow, Karn the Great Creator. I was not expecting that. Our opponent's deck really seems all over the place. They're going to minus and choose like Bolas' Citadel or something. Noxious Gearhulk. That's the black one. Six mana, five four menace. You can destroy a creature when it comes into play and gain life equal to its toughness. That is not scary to me at all. Hmm, interesting. Maybe it's just a card he can res they can resolve through Aether Gust. Not really sure. Could attack him for five with the Gideon. I think I want to make one more knight. I'm not in a rush here. Just gonna you know, make another two two. Uh, maybe this was wrong because if you had, if they have fatal push, they can fatal push a knight and keep the Karn around, but it's not that big of a deal. Then his Karn is at one still. I keep I keep saying he. I'm I'm sorry. I'm trying to say they. Let's see. Could cycle Azorius Charm right now. If I hit a four or three drop Planeswalker, it's really good. I think I'll just pass. Not in a rush. If they don't do anything, I'll castle Vantress. It's 
So this just gets to kill a knight, and it's a 5-4 menace. It's a black creature. Um, okay. I get to scry with Vandris. It's really good in this situation. They still have that Uro in the graveyard that I do want to leave up Gus for. Scry 2. Urborg makes it annoying to tap my lands. I'm gonna bottom this and top this. Absolutely. The fairy is just like a fantastic draw. I'm just gonna make a two-two. Play island. Play to fairy. This way I get to leave up Azorius Charm and Aether Gust. And draw a card. Just drew an island. I thought this was the lifelink one. Oh, it's not the Gear Hulk, it's the lifelink, it's the uh what's the name of it? It's the one that are, it's the ones that are it's the cycle that's still in standard. I don't play with those cards that that much either. The green one ramps you. The black one you can sack a creature to destroy another creature. This is the Gear Hulk cycle. You just don't usually see noxious Gear Hulk. Our opponent's deck has a lot of sweet cards. I mean, they're going pretty deep. Another Karn. Okay. Minus the Karn. Sky Sovereign. That's good. Now if there's no attack, I'm going to cycle this. Oh, I can't tap my lands with that Urp in play. Now I can start attacking for a lot with this Gideon and these knights. I can like minus the Teferi on the Gear Hulk if I want. Kill the Karn, hit for a bunch of damage. Then they can Sky Sovereign. Alright, land's not good, but we get a draw step and then a Teferi draw step. I suppose I'll just oh no, because I might want to minus the Teferi. I'll start with Opt. Definitely bottom of land. Another land. It's unfortunate. This is just a 5-4 menace. I mean, I don't want to let the opponent minus the Karn again. If I attacked with all the knights at the Karn, though, it can eat a knight and then I kill the Karn, so I'm trading a knight for the Karn. But then they could potentially attack one of my Planeswalkers. Now I'm going to plus the Teferi because I don't want him to be able to just Sky Sovereign eat the Teferi. Azorius Charm. Alright. I think Azorius Charm is actually reasonable. I'm actually going to make another knight. I'll just attack Karn first. I was going to say, I can Azorius Charm this as a blocker. So if he blocks one, they block one, I'll Azorius Charm the Gear Hulk. Well, then they get to recast it next turn. I think that's honestly fine. I have a Teferi going. I have a Gideon going. Him killing, them killing another knight doesn't really do anything. I suppose I'll just wait. I can just do it on attack. And pass. 
I don't think I want to scry right now. I can just scry later and uh, that'll be fine. Looks like they're going to attack with the Gear Hulk and all of Zori's charm now. Yeah, this seems better to me. I mean, it's slightly annoying that they get to put Gear Hulk on top of their library and cast it again next turn, but all they get to kill is a is a knight. So they can Sky Sovereign, hit Gideon down to one, or deal three to Teferi. But I'm not too concerned with that either. And I still have this Aether Gust up for a potential Uro. I get to scry with Castle Vantress if there's nothing that I want to Aether Gust. Uro, okay, I'll Gust it. So if I had scryed with the Vantress, I would have been able to, but this plays around mystical as well. It's plus the Teferi. Vito is a great draw. Suppose I'll play Fabled Passage. I'll crack it. Don't know if I need to crack it yet, but now I'm going to start getting in for damage. Having a backup hero of Dominaria is nice insurance. Uh, I'll scry now. Oh, I just cannot tap my lands. Bottom, bottom. I'm going to get to untap two lands. So the one Castle of Interest, I think, is, is nice. I think it's better than uh, Castle Ardenvale. The White Castle makes one ones for four. I think this is better. So our opponent's facing lethal. If they just go Gear Hulk, aren't they still just dead? They get to kill one, go to 12, then take 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I guess not. But they're not in a good spot, that's for sure. Grazer? Sure. It's another blocker. I have three verdict in the deck. Bottomed one of them. Hey, Luz, come on. Here, come on. Yeah. Dog does not want to come say hi. And just go to our turn. Just going to plus. Oh, verdict. That's nice. I can go verdict hit with Gideon. I think this game is pretty much locked up. I'm just going to attack, verdict, plus, or make a knight with Gideon. And pass. Just going to veto this. This 
still have mystical to speed up for anything else. And we got him. Sweet. Good game. Take a quick break and be right back for round three. All right, welcome to round three against Boland. One and one in this Pioneer League. Let's be on the play. And I'll keep this hand. So that's totally fine. Just opt into another land and start playing these Planeswalkers. Uh, yeah, I don't think I played, honestly, that well in either of the first two matches. We I know we won the second match, but our opponent's deck was pretty funky. Pretty spicy, I should say. Um, but yeah, I, I think I didn't play that tight in either of them. Uh, so I'll try to try to tighten up the play a little bit. Opponent being friendly here, it's nice. My my beer was almost blocking the chat, so I almost missed it. Basic island, huh? Is it inverter? Is it breach? Is it something else? I'll top a land in this situation. Now I don't need to do this Fabled Passage because I have four lands. So I can just play another Hallowed Fountain tapped. Don't need to rep anything, I don't think. We'll see what our opponent does. I could jam Time Raveler next turn or Narset. Opponent can opt. I feel like this is inverter now. Yeah. Jeez. Okay. So Narset is pretty good against that as well, but I mean, Teferi bounce that and then resolve Narset next turn seems like the play to me. Bounce. Yeah, Narset is really, really good in this matchup. Stops them from jacing. Yeah, when they see this hand, I don't think they're going to be too happy. Let's move this. Replay Jace. Took Chase Architect. Interesting. Oh, maybe because they have uh, the new removal spell for Narset. I think I'm just going to go Beacon, Narset. I think getting that down is more important than Teferi, honestly. I mean, more important than Gideon. Start gaining life, which is not relevant in this matchup. Minus. Wow, verdict, 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 veto. I'll take veto. Pass. This Jace almost certainly is not going to flip here. It's possible. But they would need to play several spells or cycle a couple sensors. They would have to go cycle, cycle, loot, discard in order to flip on their turn if they want to like Thoughtseize again. Poison Island. Jace. Okay, well, Narset's holding that Jace down. Targets us. Mills it to Fairy. Unfortunate that we did not get to um, counter this Jace, but that's okay. I think I'll start by minusing Narset. Zorius Charm or second Gideon? I don't think I'd need a second Gideon. I'll take an Azorius Charm. Plus a Fairy Time Raveler. So this is close because if I want to leave up Beto, I can't play a 4-drop Planeswalker. 
but I think getting a Gideon ally of Zendikar down is too important. I think I need to do that. They can loot with this Jace here. That's not too concerning. And then if we draw Gideon of the Trials later, just getting another Gideon down is really good against that deck as well. Just make a 2-2, start pressuring that Jace. Oh wow, so just went inverter right now and then they're gonna win because they can mill yeah, mill their library with Jace and then they can draw with Jace Fringe Project on their turn. If they draw if they try to draw right now they lose, but looks like they know to not do that. So yeah, lost. Hmm. No Gideon emblem. Okay. I don't think that there was anything we could do about that. Could I have drawn with Azorius Charm in response there? I don't think so. I do have a ton of hate for this matchup. Don't need Verdict. Elspeth's Sun's Champion seems a little slow as well. Gideon's all seem good. Could go down to Teferi. Azorius Charm's not usually going to be cast, I don't think. I like keeping the sensor, I suppose. Four Veto, four Dispute, two Rest in Peace, three Sensor, four Narset, four Gideon, Teferi. I mean, this is pretty hateful for this matchup. Looks good. Yeah, I'll keep. I suppose I'll just shock in. Do I want to, like, let him know I have these cards? Probably not. I'll probably just play a tap talent fountain. I don't think there's any one drop that I'm going to want to either cycle in response to or cast mystical. So I'll just play a Hallowed Fountain tapped. Pass. I think that just disguises our information the best. Well, so much for that, but that's okay. Our hand is still pretty decent. Like, our opponent can take Sensor, they can take Mystical. Either one we're fine with. Because then they're not taking one of these powerful Planeswalkers. Fairy Master of Time has been very good. I, I don't think you're necessarily going to want like a ton of copies, like four or anything, in one of these type of decks. Just because it's not actual card advantage like Teferi Hero of Dominaria is, where you're drawing extra cards. But having some for really nice card selection seems really good to me. Not playing Glacial there because I don't want to give away any information. And I'll just leave up sensor for like a JVP or something. Our opponent thought for a while, so blocking them out of a two drop here is nice. I'm surprised our opponent was able to find the combo there. I thought we were kind of safe. Not gonna cycle sensor here. I can cycle it next turn if I want. Could play I'll, I'll just play Beacon here. Pass. Can't cycle sensor into like a Dovin's veto, but opt is fine. Opt is fine too. Could counter the second opt, but I don't think that's a great use of my sensor. I'd rather just cycle it. 
I want to find like my Dovin's Vetoes and stuff. Cycle now. Plenty on Jamming Teferi anyway. Ooh, Gideon. Gideon's a nice one. Just probably going to jam to Fairy, and if he has Mystical, they have Mystical. <laughs> It'll probably get countered. Are they going to flash something in in response to a Fable Passage crack? That doesn't. That wouldn't really make sense to me. I think almost assuredly this is going to get countered. Opponent does know about the Hero of Dominaria though. Okay, it does not. Interesting. All right, and we got a couple Gideons to start jamming. Hero's downfall. Okay. We got a loot. We traded for a downfall. We got three more planeswalkers in hand. Not really in danger of getting comboed anytime soon. If the opponent plays a Jace here, though, that's pretty bad for us. I guess we can just respond to that by playing a Teferi Hero of Dominaria. Potentially even minusing it. Yeah, just passing. Probably going to play a Gideon Ally of Zendikar because that's, I think, the one I care about the least. The other ones are pretty annoying for our opponent to deal with. And the good thing about this one is if it resolves and you think, if the opponent thinks they don't care about it, then I'm able to, if I'm ever able to resolve this Gideon, um, having two Gideons that they have to answer before they win the game is like way harder. Sometimes they have three heroes downfall, but that's about it. Dig through time. Okay. They still can't straight combo us here because they need six mana to go Inverter plus Thassa's Oracle. They probably don't even have that many Thassa's Oracle left in their deck either. Maybe now that I have like the sensors, I should just start playing Dig Through Time, but we're just getting farther and farther farther away from Blue White Planeswalkers at that point and closer to just like a standard Blue White Control deck. Opponent also at 14, hitting for 7 this turn. So, it's looking good. I think I'm just going to hit for 7. See if that happens. Eliminate. Sure. So eliminate that's not targeting this Gideon Ally of Zendikar. And now I go Interplanar Beacon. So unless he has like a negate or something, this will resolve around mystical. And then that's going to be tough for him. Tough for them. <laughs> I'll get the hang of it soon enough. Concedes to Gideon of the Trials. One and one against Inverter here. I thought Inverter was going to be a rough originally when I was building the deck, but now that like you look at the post-board configuration, I think this deck is favored post-board. Two Rest in Peace makes it kind of annoying for them to combo, and then just like Quad Veto, like 11 Counter Spells, a couple of Detention Spheres, just like Teferi and Narset are both really annoying, the Gideons are annoying, then a couple of Value Planeswalkers. Yeah, it looks... Looks good for us. Let's go. Yeah, Sam looks great. Opponent on the mulligan. They can sneak in like a JPP. They can have some Thoughtseize and stuff. But... Shock. They're going to opt. Maybe Cyclo Center try to hit lands. 
I don't need to cycle the sensor. I'd rather hold it. Vito is just like insanely, insanely good in this matchup. I know it doesn't counter Inverter or Oracle, but it counters like everything else that matters. No Thoughtsies as well. It's great for us. No reason to play Fabled Passage because I have four lands, so I can play Fabled Passage as my fourth land. Misplayed with that Fabled Passage before. Oh, easy, easy sensor. Hold the veto for something else. I might even just get Narset down over to Fairy. Wow, all three of these are so good in the matchup. I think Narset's the best because if they have Jace, Wilder, and Mysteries, Narset is best against that. And if they have like Inverter, that's I can deal with that with the other cards in my hand. So I'm just going to go Narset. I know the size to eliminate, but... These die to eliminate too. This will draw a card. Ooh, a veto or a dispute. Just a veto. Veto is so good. Now if the opponent like thought seizes, like and they just see this, it's rough. Eliminate, sure. Hmm. So now I'm going to go Gideon of the Trials over Teferi to play around Mystical Dispute because if I Teferi and it gets Mystical, that's pretty annoying. I'll just Fabled Passage now. Get a Plains. Cast Gideon of the Trials. Plan on just... Oh, got a got an Evelyn. Just plan on end of turn opting for a land here. That way I can... To ferry with Vito back up. Is this going to be a Jace? Jace Wielder of Mysteries would be the most annoying card here. Inverter right now. Hmm. I mean, it's true that I can't stop a Thassa's Oracle, but I do have Gideon of the Trial. Trials. Uh, plus Emblem. So their library is going to be Opt, Narset, Eliminate, Fabled Passage. Four cards. That's not many. And I have Double Veto, Sensor, Teferi. Yeah, it resolves. I feel like that this is a Desperation Inverter and that I'm going to be able to beat this. Because I think if I just counter this Eliminate, I'm going to win. And I, Gideon can plus to stop the Inverter. From attacking it. So opponent could have multiple inverters and try to draw, eliminate, cast it, then later cast another inverter, shuffle, eliminate back in again, and cast it again. But I still think I can beat that. So I think I'm fine here. Triangle land would be would be huge. Yep. Top. I may even just want to leave up like all these counter spells and not play Teferi. Let's just prevent damage from this. Hmm. I mean, if I Teferi plus. The opponent could have multiple eliminates for this Gideon. I mean, right now, I'm winning, right? Thassa's Oracle doesn't win in the game. Jace can't win in the game. I'm actually just going to pass. I'd just rather have double veto plus sensor up. I think that's better. Jace. I'm going to counter this just because if the opponent kills the Gideon, they can win with the Jace. So it's just one less thing I have to worry about. I could veto it and keep sensor in hand, but 
I think I'd rather just keep double veto to play around like a thought sees plus the eliminate or multiple eliminates. Yeah, I'm not even going to play Teferi till next turn because next turn I can play Teferi plus double veto. And I'd rather just have double veto up this turn to protect my Gideon of the Trials. This looks good for us. Narset. I feel like Narset is, is fine. I don't think that does anything like he can they can find the eliminate but sure resolves I don't think that Narset is gonna win them the game yeah it just concedes they know we have one veto they can't beat one it was a desperation inverter all right welcome to round three we're against extra easy 88 five land detention sphere of Zoria's charm Let's go. I'm going to keep this hand. I'm a big fan of not mulling hands like this, especially with decks like this where, I mean, I want to hit a ton of land drops and just start tapping out like playing big planeswalkers. I have two pieces of early interaction. This hand actually looks pretty good to me. Sparring advantage. Are we against burn? No. Feather. Hand is decent against this though. Hmm. Do I want to take two to opt? I think I do. They have a lot of instant speed like protection for their guys. Taking two is kind of annoying, but Really believe it's correct here. There's an Arcanist, okay. Attack for one. Let's opt. Another Detention Sphere. Seems good to me, but maybe it's not as good as like finding a Planeswalker or a Verdict. What other protection spells would deal with this? A bottom be a little greedy. Well, drew land. But I wouldn't have wanted to draw detention sphere into land anyway. Let's just go glacial pass. Leave up sensor and Azorius charm. Hopefully they like go for like a one drop spell that matters here so that they want to flash back with Dreadhorde and I get to Azorius charm something. Swift Spear, okay. I want to find Verdict. Defiant Strike right now. They're going to be able to flash that back. There's nothing I can do except censor it if I want to prevent card draw but I think more likely I'm just going to Azorius Charm. They're going to Defiant Strike the Hoplite again in which case I'll just Azorius Charm it. Yeah. And then the Defiant Strike actually won't resolve here because the favorite hoplite won't be on the battlefield anymore. So this is actually good for me. Does this gain indestructible and prevent all damage? Okay, that's what it is. Oh, I actually could not have censored that because Arcanist flashes it back without paying its mana cost. Card, this card's insane. I'll probably just Detention Sphere the Arcanist right now and hope they don't have a way to uh, protect it and then try to jam Gideon next turn. I think that's better than leaving up sensor. D-Sphere, 
target the Arcanist with the ability. No gods willing one time? They have it. Rough. They put the favorite hoplite on bottom. They can flashback gods willing if they want here to trigger prowess and scry one. That'd be fine. Next turn I get to go interplanar beacon, Gideon gain two, make a two two. It's reasonable. Veto. Alright, they didn't even they did not want to flashback God's Willing. They only have two cards in hand as well. I'm just gonna jam Gideon Ally of Zendikar. Gain two life, make a two two. Seems nice. It's not a deck that can like counter this. Pass. Now any planeswalker we draw for the rest of the game is pretty nice with double interplanar beacon. Actually it matters in a matchup like this. Is feather? Yeah. Okay. Gotta draw verdict now. So likely gonna flashback this god's willing this turn, pro white. Oh, and then Feather returns it to the hand. It's really good. So they have God's Willing in hand. Scribe bottom. Gideon takes two. Okay, so God's Willing goes to hand at the end step. That's right. I think if I cycle sensor right now, I can't verdict anyway. So I think I'm going. If I fabled passage, I'm more likely to even draw a verdict. So I'll do that. I'll make a 2 2. Can always verdict the god. Uh, can always veto the gods willing. Just pass the turn. My Gideon will die here. Got four verdict in the deck. Gotta find one. Seen fourteen cards out of the sixty. Going straight to attacks. Attacking me and then Gideon. So I could double block Arcanist here, then they'll probably God's willing it, and then I'll veto that. I like it. Could have double blocked the Swiss beer, but I think getting the Arcanist off the table is more important. Oh, Reckless Rage. Hmm. I guess I'm going to veto it. I suppose I'd rather counter that than counter the God's Willing. That doesn't go back to their hand because of Feather. And if they want a God's Willing, they can. They do. I don't lose any of my Knights now, though. Now God's Willing will go back to their hand. But I still just need to find Verdict. If I find Verdict, I think I'm a pretty heavy favorite. favorite. If not, I think I'm going to lose. All right, so God's willing back to hand. Cycle sensor. Verdict. Verdict one time. 
beginning of the trials, they do have God's willing. Azorius charm as well. Okay. Getting into the trials, gain two life. I'll plus target the feather here. Uh, what am I gonna want a Zorius charm? Probably gonna want to draw a card because they have God's willing. I don't think they're gonna God's willing this. Get in. Whenever you cast an insert source as well that targets, exile it at the beginning of the next end step. So if I plus Gideon, they can just get a free scry one, actually. Prevent all damage target permanent would deal. I could just I mean they can just scry one anyway. There's nothing I can do about that. So I'll just plus. Getting to flashback the Reckless Rage with Dreadhorde Arcanist is really annoying. Yep. Again, I'm most likely going to just draw with this Azorius Charm. Not going to attack yet. Just going straight to combat. Attack Gideon, attack me, attack Gideon. But we'll see if the opponent lets us block the Dreadhorde Arcanist with a Knight Ally. Attack Gideon with everything. Looks like Gideon's going down. So does Feather even return it off a Dreadhorde Arcanist trigger? Exile that card instead of putting it into the graveyard as it resolves. They have three cards, see if they go up to four. I guess it would happen on end step. I don't think they... I guess it resolved. I think Feather might work. All right, Gideon down. Return Reckless Rage, do they get it back? They do, okay, it works. Wasn't sure about that one. Teferi, okay. Play Teferi and Plus. So gain us some life and maybe buy us an attack step. We get to Reckless Rage on end of turn though. Come on, just trying to find Verdict. Reckless Rage, our guy, sure. I usually play much faster, but with lag, it's pretty tough. I suppose I'll just get Island here. Could have played uh, Howard Fountain there as well tapped, but... I think I'd rather thin, I'm, I'm not sure. To 
the fairy minus doesn't doesn't do anything because God's willing. They just get God's willing back. Even though F sixing shows we don't really have anything, I just would rather save my clock and speed up this game. I don't think they generally play cards that give their creatures indestructible, so if I do find Verdict, I'm going to be in a reasonable spot. Wow. I mean, the thing is, I don't even think that Elspeth can really do it here. I suppose I'll cast it. Go up to 16, just buy a bunch more time. They can go Reckless Rage. want to keep at least one land in hand in case we draw the new Teferi. Yeah, Reckless Rage is really what does it for that deck. Maybe I can chump the Swift Spear if they don't god... I mean, they're going to god's one, right? But if I can keep this Sun's Champion alive, it's huge. Yeah, Reckless Rage is really what, what does it for that deck. Just a removal spell that they can continue to cast every turn. And there's no way we can draw two answers for Feather. Oh, wow. Is the opponent allowing us to keep our Elspeth in play for one turn? If I draw Verdict next turn, it's insane. I get to go Verdict, then plus Elspeth. Oh, fight is one. I mean... Oh, they get this back. Okay, we're, we're just dead. Because now that we know they have that, I can't even have Verdict as an out. I guess Fight as One is pretty huge for that deck. Like, now this can gain protection from a color and can gain Indestructible. I'll just concede. I, I don't think I can beat that. Our opponent was able to just have Feather on the board for the whole time. Hmm. I haven't really considered Rest in Peace against that deck before, but they have just Dreadhorde Arcanist, I guess, because Feather will still allow them to get their spells back. Aether Gust seems good. Narset doesn't seem great. Do I want Veto? I think I probably do. Maybe these like Gideons aren't good. Could just take out the whole Gideon package. This seems reasonable to me. Keeping in two Narset. Do I want to keep in more Narsets? I think I want to leave in Azorius Charm Sensor. I think I want all the Vetoes. Because Feather says as it resolves. So if I counter his key spells with Veto, he's not going to get them back with Feather. The only reason he was able to there is because he also had Dreadhorde Arcanist. We just didn't find Veto. I mean, Verdict. Um, yeah, honestly, this looks okay to me. Fine with Elspeth Sun's Champion, just as a one up still. It's been a fun league so far. Triple Blue Source Hand. Vito, Vito, Azorius Charm. I'm on the play. I think I'm going to Mulligan. Yeah, this seems better to me. Keep. 
think I'm putting Azorius Charm back. I want to keep all three lands. I want to keep Verdict for sure. And I think I want to keep Teferi as well. And I think Aethergust is... So it's between Aethergust and Azorius Charm. I think Gust is better than Charm. See what extra easy 88 has for us. They have the favorite hoplite. They do. Cannot gust the favorite hoplite right now, which is potentially why I should have kept the Azorius charm. Hmm. I'm just going to attack for one. Are they going to try to play a spell here? Just one. Pass the turn. Great. Hmm. I could play to fairy. I think it's good. Because they're not going to be able to play a protection spell in response, yeah. Because once I have to ferry down, they can't play instants. So getting to bounce that is is pretty huge. So they can recast favorite hoplite. It's fine. Let's see if they just pass the turn here. Boros Charm, deal four to the to fairy. Okay. Narset or to fairy master of time. I do not want to play verdict yet. I'm gonna to play to fairy. Plus, could discard an opt, could discard a fabled passage. I think I need to discard opt here, not get greedy. Because by keeping the fifth land, I make sure to have Narset plus, plus Gust up next turn. I do have another loot with the fairy here. A deal of Heliod. Sure. They probably have a protection spell for this favorite hoplite as well. So I think I'm just going to let this to fairy take three here. Because if I try to phase it out and then they go like. Protection spell, make it four power, and protect it, kill your Teferi. That's worse for me, but if I just let it take three, then my then it, I'm fine. Ordeal of Heliod still in the deck, huh? I mean, I just don't care about the gain 10 at all. Boros Charm to Fairy. Sure. Vito, that's a great draw. I could just discard land at this point and then go to my turn. Wrath is favorite hoplite. Then I have Veto plus Aether Gust on the next turn, and still a Narset in my hand. Let's 
So they do have a lot of cards that give indestructible in Boros Charm and Fight is one. Could opt here to get greedy, but I'm not gonna do that. Just gonna get their creature off the board. Opponent with now four cards in hand after drawing a card. Let's see if they play like a feather here. Oh, they they get their Luris. Okay. I think I'll start with Opt. Verdict on top. Play Narset. Wait, wait. So they took all the feathers out of their deck? Because I was going to say, I didn't even realize they had Luris, but I, honestly, I was embarrassed. I was like, how did I not see they had Luris? It's kind of hard on Magic Online to notice these things sometimes, but they must have sided out their feathers and sided in to like a Luris companion. Interesting. Very interesting. So next turn they can go like Luris favorite hoplite, and I'm just going to go verdict again. So that being the case, I mean, Teferi is pretty insane against that deck. Not allowing them to play instants really messes up their game plan. Yeah, so opponent can go, again, Luris, favorite hoplite. You can go Luris, Ordeal of Heliod. Either of those is fine. If they have a fight as one here, it's bad for me. But if they don't, I'm in a good spot. Don't really have time to play the Teferi first as well. I think I take Opt and shock this in and play Verdict. No fight is won, please. They have it. Man. That is brutal. Wonder if I should have just waited. It's rough. Now they can play or deal with Luris. Now it's going to be tough to find another verdict. Attacking, oh, attacking that at Narset. Okay. Sure. Why did they not flashback Heliod? Now they're doing it now? Okay. Opt. Gotta look for another verdict. Azorius Charm. I mean, Azorius Charm is decent. Hmm. I'm thinking if I like Azorius Charm the Hoplite on attacks, they. The opponent tries to respond with like a protection spell and I get to veto it. And I take four. They don't really get value out of their Luris. Alright, I'll top it. Not sure if that's right, but I think this is the line we have to take to try to win. I'll just crack now. Drawing a land was actually pretty good there. Because now I have Azorius Charm. Like any combination of Charm plus Veto, Veto, Gust. I can cast three of these four cards this turn, which actually might be relevant. Yeah, I agree. Charm, Charm is probably better than just a random card. Ooh, 
would like to draw into a, another verdict here, but there's only two left in the deck. So this is going to trigger, right? So I'll just try to Azorius Charm now before that happens, I, I suppose. It just worked. It's kind of surprising. Wait, why did he not attack? Is he playing around NATO? I guess. Dreadhorde Arcanist. Suppose I'm just gusting this. See if they put it on top. Put it on bottom. Okay. Ordeal. Target this Swiss Spear. This is just main two. I mean, I can Teferi balance. Sure. Let's go to Fairy. Gonna try to bounce this with Spear. Assuming this should work. Drawing just a Glacial Fortress, not good. Opponent can recast this ordeal as well. They're going to do it. They don't. All right, just take the damage. All right, verdict, let's go. Gonna let this resolve too, I think. I don't think there's any reason to waste one of my vetoes here. I don't think this is really doing much. They're gonna just get to recast or deal next turn anyway. Hmm. So now I'm taking a bunch of damage. If I don't draw a verdict, I'm dead. If I do, then I'm in a reasonable spot. Maybe going for the second verdict, I was a little bit too hasty with that one. Not attacking with Luris. I feel like the opponent's not playing well and just giving us a chance in this game. I get to scry with Vantress here. Now, I think Azorius Charm is now worse than a random card. Rather just draw a verdict now. Narset, that's good. I think I'll go Beacon. Narset, gain two life, try to find verdict. I have one, two, three, four, five, six mana, so I still can verdict plus veto here. Verdict? No. So Azorius Charm. Pass the turn. Do have Azorius Charm plus double veto up. 
they also have to decide what they're sending at narset and what they're sending at me. Narset, narset, me. Huh. I have the interesting option because narset is going to die no matter what. I can just let this resolve and I can just either activate Castle Vantress or, or draw with the Zorius Charm. I think I'm just not going to... I think I'm just going to plan on activating Vantress. I just need to find Verdict. Narset dies no matter what here. Yeah. Yeah. I think the turn that I verdicted was too early. I was just... I mean, I knew they could have had Fight of One. I even said it before they cast it, but I was kind of just hoping they didn't have it. Hmm. Are any of these good enough? I mean, I can Detention Sphere the Lurus. They still have two pretty big attackers. I can just top the Jace. What if I top Jace minus... Top Jace minus play Detention Sphere still have Azorius Charm up, but then I don't have any Vigos up. Could go top top. This is tough. My opponent has held cards in hand for a while, so they could easily have a protection spell. I don't know if I can afford to top either of these, honestly. If I Jace, I do get to gain two as well. Maybe I could top the Jace and bottom the Detention Sphere. Because then I can go Jace and then still have Azorius Charm plus Veto up. Alright, I'm going to do that. It's kind of an awkward play, but I have to make a play, and I think that's my best chance to win here. Yeah, D Sphere was a little bit safer, but this is a little bit more greedy. <laughs> so I'll go for the greedy line. Jace gain two. I'm gonna minus the Jace. Oh, brutal. They they also basically have to send creatures at the Jace. I want to play the Hallowed Fountain tapped to have more mana on the next turn? Most likely no. How do I have these three spells up? I'm at nine. I have Azorius Charm plus double veto. Opponent with four cards in hand though. Because if I had Selfless Savior, target creature gains indestructible. It's good with Loris. Attack me, attack me, attack Jace. Alright, well I'm going to try to save the, the Jace. I can take 7, go to 2. I'd rather be able to minus the Jace again. Drawing like an Elf's Best Son's Champion would be great. Opponent can recast the ordeal here.
I don't even think I veto it. You just don't do anything. Half to minus. None of this does anything except opt. Still don't even think. See, this could be enough somehow. I'm gonna try it. It's a fairy. Go to five. I can minus target the favorite hoplite here to tuck it. Yeah. And then if he goes for a protection spell, I can veto. Otherwise, I'm only taking four. If they re try to recast or deal from the graveyard, I can veto. Still drawing off the top here, unfortunately. Hmm. That's lethal. See if they go for it, though. Or deal target itself. I'm going to veto here. I think they're going to go for a lethal bow. Hmm. There's no reason for them not to go for lethal because they can still send Savior at Teferi. So it looks like we got got by Feather. I do not like losing to this type of deck, but it'll get you sometimes. Yeah. All right. GG's opponent. Let's go to round five. All right, welcome to round five against K. Kamadina. Got to mull this hand, one land. It's just an inner point of beacon, not going to work. I'll keep this six. Probably putting back a Teferi here. This is less impactful with the less cards in hand. Rather just jam a Gideon most of the time, I think. Not planning to cycle this sensor as per usual. See what we're up against. The four mana Teferi has felt pretty good so far, says the thought sees. Um, I've actually been fairly impressed with it. Um, just the ability to loot every turn is really strong. In one of the early games this league, it helped us like just like avoid a flood. Um, I guess I'll save the fabled passage, hide that information. Um, and the ability just to like play it plus get a loot and then phase something out, protect itself and other planeswalkers is pretty nice. I've even had situations where I went like three fairy into four fairy and then they go like flash in a shark from Sharknado and I phase out the shark and then they just conceded because I had two Teferis on board and a phased out shark. So that card's been great. Opponent just really successfully picking apart our hand here. Looks like we're against Inverter. And we have nothing to do. Just going to fetch now an F6. Not too scared of most three drops out of that deck. They could play the JVP. Sometimes they have Narset, but not usually in the main. We have good sideboard for this matchup at least. You gotta be prepared for inverter and pioneer these days. 
Okay, not going to play that. Just hide information. Opponent missed a land drop. So bad news is they have a lot of spells in hand. The good news is they're on two lands. So if we draw out of this, if I get Teferi, I called it. I honestly did not see that Teferi before I drew it. It's going to try to jam. Might get censored. Please no. Wow, resolved. <laughs> that was that was pretty greedy going just to try to slam that to Barry there, but sometimes you just gotta jam. Now we're in a great spot. They could go land heroes downfall. I'm just concede. Wow. Alright, we're definitely against inverter with those cards, so gonna do the same board plan as the last time. Board in a lot of cards. We board in Rest in Peace, Narset, Mystical, and Veto. Side out Elspeth. Verdict. Azorius Charm. One three one four fairy. I like all the Gideons, even though they can be a little awkward, just because of Gideon of the Trials emblem. So if you go like Gideon of the Trials emblem, they go like Heroes Downfall it or something. Then you're like Gideon now I have Zendikar. This also cannot be eliminated, uh, which is kind of nice. Plus it's just a card that can just like end the game fairly quickly by going 2-2 and then start activating to make it a 5-5. Five -five. Yeah, 4 Veto, 4 Dispute. Trip sensor to rest in peace for Narset. That's actually like kind of like the silent key here is the quad Narset. Opponent Mulligan to six. We're going to snap keep. Sand is great. Teferi also really good in this matchup. They're going to be bringing in disputes as well. Thought, do they have a thought seize? Okay, they reveal island and pass. They did Mulligan. Do I want to dispute a... Well, I was thinking if I was going to play Hallowed Mountain, but I think it's just better to play Island. If they opt here, am I going to dispute it? I mean, I'm thinking about it, honestly. Okay, they don't even opt. They probably have dispute. I think they have dispute. See, generally you don't want to telegraph your plays like that if you can help it. Just gonna play glacial, leave up veto and dispute, and I should say veto or dispute, just depending on what they do here. I mean, I'll counter anything at this point. Not gonna go for Teferi either. Wow, sensor, that's a good draw. Gonna play planes. That way I have veto and dispute up now. No sense to jam Teferi into a counter spell. Our opponent have like a NATO here. They decide not to do anything. If our opponent tries to jam, that's great for us. Just all these counters. We have a bunch of lands. I'm just gonna keep sitting here for now. I can play like a tap talent fountain next turn. Again, my channel is youtube.com slash snapbolt. I'm on Twitch, twitch tv slash snapbolt games. Come follow me on either platform. I'd really appreciate it. I have a lot of fun making these videos, jamming some leagues. Just starting to stream now, so just still getting the hang of it, but having a good time. Our opponent deep in the tank, like, are they deciding, like, should I jam, like, a JC or something? Like, I really hope they do. If they try to jam, oh, a Thoughtseize. I feel like I want to just veto this. Yeah, I want to hide information. I'll still have Dispute up. 
and I don't want to show them Sensor or Teferi. Next turn I can play Teferi with Dispute Up. And if they go for a Narset or like a JVP here, I'll just dispute it. They're not going to play anything. Yeah, so now I go Interplanar Beacon, try to resolve Teferi. Because they have to have double counter to stop this. They could have Mystical plus Sensor, but they only have four cards in hand. Uh, just resolved, just like that. Kind of want a minus two to play around and eliminate on their turn. I'm going to. I, I really want to draw a card. Veto, great draw. Yeah. Got a snap bolt. I I gotta play some modern and, and cast some snap bolts. Gotta be true to the name. Oh, this is getting disputed for sure. I mean, this matchup is just pretty good for us, honestly. Post board. Game one, it's not great. Now I have Teferi. Just gonna play a tap land here, leave up double counter. Opponent does have five cards in hand. Sensor's looking worse as time goes on. But we still have Veto and Detention Sphere, both of which are very good. The good news is our opponent cannot counter back because we just have a Teferi Time Reveler. This card is just like pretty dumb, honestly. It just basically says none of your spells can be countered. The opponent cannot interact with you. Eliminate the Teferi. Uh, I'm going to counter this. Again, this just turns off all of their counter spells. They bottomed with Opt. I think I'll cycle Sensor now. I don't think it's doing as much. Oops. I don't think it's doing as much right now. Rather just, okay, draw and take that or another Planeswalker. Veto is a great draw though. Now we're kind of just sitting around waiting for like a Teferi Hero of Dominaria, a Jace Architect. Drawing more Vetoes would be fine. If they just go like Inverter, I can just D Sphere it. It's another Jace, just gonna Veto. Dig through time. Still veto that. Opponent down to two cards now. That could just be like Mystical Dispute plus something else random. Another veto. Just gonna sack now. Plus to Fairy. Pass. Yeah, even if our opponent, I mean, they could have, their hand could be like Inverter plus Dispute, could be Double Dispute, could be Double Inverter, could be a Thassa's Oracle. All right, I'll let Opt resolve. Put a card on top. Interesting. Eliminate. Yeah, I'm going to counter it. Vito is just pretty good right now I think. Is the opponent going to salt off in the chat? Or are they going to concede? They're probably going to complain about triple veto. Oh we've played four vetoes this game. <laughs> I was going to say they're probably going to complain about triple veto but it's quad veto. Opponent just sitting in stun silence. <laughs> okay. 
Maybe they were just doing something else. And there's the hero of Dominaria right on time. Man, I'm lagging pretty bad. Can't even tap my lands. Fairy plus. I'll probably just plus the time raveler as well now. I mean, I suppose I could minus, but I think it's probably even just safer just to plus. If they have another eliminate, so be it. I probably should have got an island there. I don't think it matters. They could have a hero's downfall that they're saving, but I doubt it. They probably would have killed the fairy earlier. We have no more vetoes in the deck, so that's that's something. And we got him. So another 3-2. I think I could have played a little tighter, especially in like rounds one and two. Round three was round four against Feather was was tough, but um I don't hate like how I played, it just like didn't quite get there. I think the deck felt better than last time. Sensor felt pretty good. I would want another Elspeth Sun's champion. Maybe we don't want these two detention spheres, but they seem kind of nice insurance. I could go down to one. Another option would be like I could just cut Interplanar Beacon. We can just I kinda of want to build like a Bant midrange deck, and the only green cards I really want to play uh quad growth spiral, quad arrow, or maybe three arrow. And then just still play a bunch of these powerful planeswalkers, maybe even still Teferi. Kind of just have like it be a standard deck with like Supreme Verdict, Teferi Hero of Dominaria, and then like Uro Gross Spiral, Azorius Charm. And then you could even play like maybe, uh, is it Joel Rail? That Joel Rail? Joel Rail? That new card, two mana, one two, whenever you draw your second card per turn, you make a two two. Could even play that in Pioneer and just play like. An upgraded standard Bant, Bant deck in Pioneer. So maybe I'll try that for my next video. Maybe I'll try. Uh, I kind of want to play uh, Simic Reclamation in Pioneer. Uh, if you haven't seen that deck, check it out. It's like Reclamation, Sublime Epiphany, Torrential Gear Hulk, just like good blue flash cards. But, anyways, I think that'll do it for this stream tonight. I hope you enjoyed the content. Uh, Again, youtube.com slash snapbolt, twitch tv slash snapbolt game. Check me out there. Subscribe to either channel. A lot of good videos on snap youtube.com slash snapbolt. So thank you so much for watching. Till next time. Peace.